学打碟，认识碟机，转盘，混音台，播放，均衡器，音量控制，渐变器，等等，技巧，错碟，调 EQ， 调渐变器。调均衡器，调音量，调混音，等等，等等，连起来。Hello, DJ. Welcome to Tribe. I'm your DJ mentor. I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of DJing. First off, check out your decks. This is a top-of-the-line DJ system. Don't worry. I know there's tons of buttons. We'll go slowly and explain each of them. It's time to load your tracks. Go ahead and load both of your tracks. Click the play button on deck one to your left. Sounds good. Now click grab the crossfader and move it left and right to fade between the two tracks. Now adjust the EQs by twisting the knobs for the highs, mids, and lows. Awesome job. You make me want to bust out some moves.
directly in the center of the CDJ player, we have this circle. This is known as the jog wheel. While in vinyl mode and on the CD player, at the right hand side, around about a third of the way down, you have a button with jog mode. If you press that and you have vinyl highlighted in blue, all of a sudden the turntable here, the platter, becomes exactly the same as a vinyl turntable. If you put your hand on the top of the turntable while the track is playing, you can stop the track. If you move your hand forward, you can make the track move forward in real time depending on the speed of your hand movement. So for example, if you move your hand forward slowly, the track will move slowly forward. If you move your hand backwards, the track will move backwards. So of course, clockwise. On the bottom right hand side of the CD player, we have what's known as the pitch control and directly in the center of the pitch control, we have the slider. If you move the slider away from you to the minus position, that will make the speed of the track that you're playing slow down. If you bring it towards you, it will make the speed of the track start to go faster. So center point is the exact speed that the producer made the track originally in the studio. Move the pitch fader, the slider away from you to the minus position, you'll slow it down all the way up to the top and you will speed. Bottom left hand corner of the mixer, you have your headphone area. On your DJ mixer, you have right at the bottom, dead center, something called the crossfade. You can move the crossfade from the right or to the left, or you can also leave it in the middle. This is how it works in a very simple way of explaining. Let's imagine you have channel four up for the right hand CD player, and you have channel one up for the left hand CD player. If your crossfade is engaged and you have the crossfade in the center position, both sides can be heard at the same time. Alternatively, if you move your crossfade to the right, now only channel four can be heard, but not channel one. Slowly then, let's imagine you move the crossfade over to the other side. While you're doing this, you can still hear channel four, but slowly you'll start to hear channel one. Okay, in front of you, you have the industry standard DJ mixer. Let's have a look at the four channels or the four faders. These are exactly like volume controls. We have one, two, three, and four. So for example, you could have four separate audio inputs. When all of the volume controls are brought all the way towards you, as far down to the bottom of the mixer as possible, even with audio playing, no sound can be heard through the main PA system. But slowly, as you bring either one fader, two, three, or four up, slowly the volume will increase. The further in the center of the mixer, we have five buttons with Q. If you press one of those buttons and it becomes highlighted in amber, you're now able to listen to that channel, so long as, of course, there's music playing through it, through your headphones. The beauty about Q is very simple. Let's imagine we have the right-hand CD player through channel four, the left-hand CD player through channel one. And let's also imagine that the right-hand volume is up and the people, the public dancing, are listening to a track from the right-hand CD player through channel four. If you then press the Q button on channel one, with the volume down and you have your headphones on and you have the level headphone dial set so you can hear music through your headphones, you and only you will be able to hear the music from channel one, the public won't. Alternatively, as you start to move the volume up on channel one with the Q button still highlighted in amber, you of course will still be able to hear that channel, that music being played through channel one, but so too will members of the public. At any given time, you can press just one of the Q buttons or two, three or four. Alternatively, there's a Q button on the master volume. By pressing that, you're now able to hear exactly what the public are listening to as well. Let's have a look top left hand corner at the microphone level volume. Now I'd like to show you the EQ area of the mixer. And that's in the center of the mixer, but relatively close to the top. We have bass also known as low we have mid and we have high also known as treble above there we have a dial called the trim the low sound is the equivalent of let's say thunder in the background it's a very low kind of rumbly sound more associated with the bass in any dance music mid is more like guitar music vocals and high is more like the sound of a hand clap or birds tweeting or cymbals crashing and above there we have the trim now this is a designated volume control for each channel and you should find a trim above every single channel below the trim on every channel 
one, two, three, and four, you will have four treble dials under each one. You also have the one, two, three, four mid dials under again each of the channels and low one, two, three, four. So every single top of the mixer, we have the master level volume. If that dial is set to seven o'clock, even if you have music playing through either or all of the CD players, no one will be able to hear the sound at all, simply because the master level volume, when it's set to seven o'clock, will give no audio through your main PA. But slowly, as you turn the dial clockwise, the sound will start to get louder and louder through the main PA. In the center of the mixer, around about the right hand side, we have the balance dial. This always needs to be set to 12 o'clock, giving you a good stereo sound. If that dial is turned to the five o'clock position, you will only get sound through the right hand side. If that dial is set to the seven o'clock position, you'll only get sound through the left hand side. So for example, if it's set to the seven o'clock position and you slowly start to move the dial clockwise, very slowly, the volume in the right hand side, as you turn the dial towards the 12 o'clock position, will rise until eventually, when the dial is set to the 12 o'clock position, you'll have an equilibrium in the sound, giving you a true stereo audio quality experience. On the right hand side of the mixer, we have the effects area. Let's start bottom right. The first thing you'll see right at the bottom right hand corner is a circle. When that's highlighted, that means that the effect you're using has been engaged. Above there, we have the level depth dial. Generally, DJs tend to keep that at 12 o'clock, meaning that the effect A will not overpower the music and B, you'll be able to hear the effect in the music. Above that is time. Now, this will allow you to set the time that you want the effect to be in relation to the track. So, for example, if you want the time of your effect to be in the exact time signature of the track, for example, the track is playing at 120 BPM, then the time dial will allow you to adjust your effect so it matches the exact time signature, the exact timing of the track that's playing. Above there, we have a switch that will let you choose the channel that you want the effect to be on. So, for example, one is channel one. Switch the switch to two, the effect will now be on channel two, three, channel three, four, channel four. You can also set the effect to the master output. That means that even if you've got two, three, or four channels up, four turntables, three or two, no matter what, the effect will be over whatever channel is up. For example, if you have channel one and two up, the effect will be on channel one and two. If you have channel one up, three and four, the effect that you've chosen will, will be on one, three and four. Above the effect selection dial, we have the effects dial itself. By turning this dial clockwise or anti-clockwise, we can choose the desired effect. On the left hand side of the CD player in the middle, we have what are known as the sound color effects. These can be engaged very simply by pressing one of the effects and then directly to the right of them, below the low frequency dial on each of the channels, we have the sound color effect dial. Ideally, these need to be set to 12 o'clock. Once set at 12 o'clock, even if one of the sound color effects is engaged, no effect will be able to be heard. What you need to do is with two of your fingers, turn the dial that you want the effect to take place over, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. The more you turn the dial, the more you will be able to hear that effect. On the left-hand side at the bottom of the CD player, we have two large buttons and four small ones. The first large button right at the bottom left-hand corner of the CD player is your play pause. That will allow you to play a track and also to pause it. Above that, you have the cue button. So for example, if you play the track and you want to cue up the track in a different position instead of the, at the beginning of the track, all you've got to do is press play pause so the track will start. Then press play pause again, the track will stop and then press Q. Now you have queued the track at a new position. Above there, we have search. So while the track is playing, if you press the right hand button, that will search through the track while it's playing and it will skip quite fast forward through the, through the track. Alternatively, if you press the button facing with arrows facing to the left hand side, that will skip through the track backwards. So you'll be able to skip through the track that you've already played. Above there, you have track search. So for example, if you queued up one track, good to go, but you don't want to play that one, 
if you press the button on the right hand side, that will skip to the next track. So for example, if you've queued up track three and you press the button on the right, you'll skip to track four. Alternatively, if you press the button on the left and you're at track three, you will skip to track two. Just below where you place your SD card, you have some buttons with hot cue. Now, while the track is playing, if you press any one of those hot cues at any given time while the track is playing, you will form a new hot cue where you pressed that hot cue. So, for example, at the beginning of a phrase, at the beginning of the vocals, at the beginning of the bass line, and you can set quite a few hot cues. Once you've pressed that button, then that will set the hot cue. When you press it again, the track will jump back to that hot cue wherever it is in the track. Let's have a look at loading some music. On the CD player, you can load music in many ways. Firstly, you can load music by placing a CD in the front. At the top of your CDJ player, you have the screen area. This is the part of the CD player that will give you all the information you need.